Hello, my name is Shai Barashi and I am the product manager for ALM and Quality Center. In this video, I'll introduce the latest features and capabilities of ALM and Quality Center 16.0. Our strategy in this release was to continue to strengthen our web interface offering with web runner test authoring and web administration, to increase quality control with new graph types and executive dashboard of KPIs, and to increase collaboration with Microsoft Teams integration and improved Atlassian Jira integration. Let's start with the web interface offering. In the previous releases, we introduced the web runner, which is a lightweight web client focusing on the main usage flows, including manual and automated test execution, defects management, and dashboard view. In LM16, we added the ability to create and manage tests. In the test plan tree, you can create a folder, a subfolder, or a test. When creating a test, the details dialog will be opened in the right hand side, including the test required fields. After filling in the required fields and save the details, you can start creating the design steps. In the design steps form, you can add and edit the step name, step description, and the expected results. You can add an attachment to be attached into a design step. You can also expand the details form to view the entire test fields and update the values as needed. In addition, we enhance the defects management module to fully support defects filter. Opening the filter dialog box allows you to filter defects by the specified value of any defects field except for comments and description fields. You can use Boolean and relational operators to define a logical expression. When applied, the filter condition will appear above the defects list. We also added an admin page where you can enable or disable the entire access to WebRunner or to a specific module. For example, if I'll disable all modules but defects and then save the changes and we log in to the web runner interface, then only the defects module will be available. In LM16, we also introduced the web administration, which is a new pure web application that consolidates site administration and SaaS add-on administration capabilities. The web administration application can be accessed from the QC bin page from the web administration link. Once logged in, you can do administration tasks. For example, you can create a project or a template project. Or you can add a new user by filling in the username and the email address. A new user role will be assigned as a basic user by default. But in the user details dialog, you can edit the user role as well as any other related field. You can also import users from a CSV files 
or send an email. Actually, do the same tasks as with the current site administration and SAS add-on. In the analysis and dashboard modules, our goal is to provide actionable insights for each phase in the project lifecycle, planning, execution, summary, and retrospective. In the previous release, we introduced two new, gra two new graph types the plan versus actual test execution graph to show the actual test execution progress, and the composite graph to combine and correlate data from up to three graphs. In LMQC 16, we introduced another two new graph types, the cycle time and the anomalies graph. Let's create a cycle time graph. In the cycle time graph configuration tab, you can specify the field that define the phases, such as the status field, the end phases, and the data to display on the y-axis. The graph view will show how long entities remained in each status. In this example, defects remained 15 days in average in status fixed or new. You can drill down to view which specific defects has the highest cycle time. This information lets you spot issues in the release cycle and pinpoint the problematic phases. You can also set the graph appearance to sort the graph values in ascending order so that it would be easy for you to view the most problematic phase first. In this example, the most problematic status is reopen where defects remain 20 days in average before it being moved to another status. The second graph type introduced in the LMQC 16 is the anomalies graph. In the configuration tab, you can specify the field that defines phases, the specific phase, the duration, and working days. The graph view will show the number of entities that are stuck in one phase for an extended amount of time. This example shows that there are 149 defects that are stuck in status new for more than 30 days. If you'll set the x-axis to severity, then you'll see that there are 30 urgent defects that are stuck in status new for more than 30 days. The Quality Insight incorporates global search and executive dashboard functionality. Once installed, the Quality Insight link will be added to the QCBIN file. In the Site Administration, you will need to enable Quality Insight via the Tools menu by entering the quality server URL and username. You will also need to enable quality insight in the project level via the site projects menu. The executive dashboard lets you create and manage KPI cards to measure how your team or organization progresses towards goals. Let's see an example on how to create a fixing ratio KPI cards. The first card we will create is of total number of defects. You can select the domain and project as well as edit the filter to be focused on a specific release. The second card we will create is of the number of resolved defects. We will edit the filter to include the same release as defined in the first card.
and we'll, oh, we will also uh, filter the status to be of closed and or fixed defects only. The third card we will create is a percentage card, where the numerator will be of the resolved defects card value, and the denominator will be of the total defects card. The result we'll get is the fixed ratio of the number of resolved defects out of the total defects found in the filtered release. When exit the edit mode and click on the number, we can see a summary of all defects related to the card. Now let's go back to the edit mode and see more functionality. The indicator enables you to define indicators and thresholds for the dashboard. Here you can see some predefined indicators for both number and percentage cards. For example, you can define a thresholds indicator for a percentage card where if the percentage is higher than 80%, then it will color the value in green. If the percentage is between 50 and 80%, it will color the value in yellow, and if it below 50, it will color the, the value in red. Now let's go back to the fixing ratio card and assign the new indicator instead of the default one. The card value will be colored in red since it's below the threshold of 50% as defined in the new indicator. You can also create a tag indicator to use tags instead of colors. When you apply the, the tag indicator, then the relevant tag will be added to the card according to the threshold definition. In addition, you can define an indicator for number card as well, and edit its threshold as done for the percentage card. In this example, it will be colored in orange, since the number is between 100 and 200. You can also add card with predefined filter using the Add from Sample option. For example, let's choose the Defect Pending Verify sample to filter defects that were fixed in the last 7 days. The filter setting will be filled in automatically. You can then update the historical data to reflect your need. For example, let's update the last x days to be 300. And when saved, a new number card will be added to the dashboard with the calculated value. By default, my homepage is the first module you'll see when you log in into LMQC. In the previous release, we introduced the My Work tab to highlight your open work item and most recent visits. In LMQC 16, we added the My Dashboard tab to highlight your relevant graphs. To add a dashboard to My Dashboard tab, you need to go to the Dashboard module. Select any dashboard you want, right-click on it, and choose to pin to My Dashboard option. Then when you go back to My Dashboard tab, the selected dashboard will be displayed. This enables you to focus on what's most matter to you in any given time in the project lifecycle. The LMQC integration with Microsoft Teams allows you to communicate with others by sharing information on a specific entity. First, Unity enabled the integration in the site administration, as well as input Teams client ID and tenant ID as generated when registered to Microsoft.
When done, you can open any entity details, step on a user field, and click on the icon next to the user name. For the first time, you'll be asked to sign in to your Microsoft account. Then, a Teams chat dialog will be launched with the entity URL. Clicking on the entity link will launch LMQC, highlighting the relevant entity. The test management plugin for Jira allows Jira users to continue planning and delivering their work items in Jira with immediate visibility of the larger quality process being managed in ALM Quality Center. The test management plugin for Jira can be downloaded from the Microfocus Marketplace. Once downloaded and installed in Jira, you should configure the ALM Requirement ID custom field in the Jira Administration settings. And also select the relevant Jira projects to be applied. In the ALM Configuration section, you should add an ALM server and update its settings. Then you should add a mapping between ALM project requirements and Jira issues. If you are using Microfocus Connect for auto-synchronization between Jira and ALM, you will need to map the ALM requirement ID in Jira to the requirement ID in ALM. Once done, the ALM test coverage pane will be added to the Jira issue dialog. In this example, the Jira story is linked to ALM requirement ID number 10, and there are six tests assigned to this requirement in ALM. Now Jira users can understand at a glance if test cases have been assigned and executed and their status. When deeper quality insight is needed, users can simply click on the link to open the rich ALM quality center views to understand the test details and other associated information and graphs.